This is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321 and in today's video I'm taking a look at the Bexley Sleeve Filler. Videos from other YouTubers that I refer to will be linked in the description. The outer sleeve is made of cardboard and it's labeled with the pen name and a little sticker that denotes that it's made in the USA. It's got the name of the material and this is a stub nib. It comes in this dark blue. I don't know if this is faux leather or actual leather. It feels really nice. It has Bexley imprinted in the front, embossed, I guess you would say. It's a nice clamshell box, a velvet blue interior with Bexley stamped in silver, and it's got a like a faux suede feeling pin bed and I like this because the pin is in there fairly securely but it's not clamped in there really hard you don't have to pry the pin out and underneath the pin bed is just a use and care guide it's nice and simple now I did go to bexleypins.com and all the pins that they have on their site are listed as out of stock. The back page is a registration form, but I'm not 100% sure that Bexley is still making pens. This resin is the camouflage model. There was also one that was a little more red and orange. What was it called? I'll look it up and I'll insert it in here. And there was also a black model, but this was my favorite. Unfortunately, Van S, this was the only color that they had in stock. This is a sleeve filler, and you access the sleeve by unscrewing the back. Now the threads are a little wiggly, not terrible, but enough to be able to notice. Now this back only goes back to a point. There's a stop, so don't try to try to thread it all the way off the back because it doesn't come off that direction. There's a little cap here on the back that does thread off. Now when we were in the store we went ahead and disassembled the entire thing and the young man who was helping me out was able to get this back part off and it just screws on there and if you don't tighten it down too hard you'll be able to get this back off. I haven't been able to get this back off, but it's not necessary to maintain the pin. I don't know if Mike may have put a little bit of glue in there when he reassembled the pin. It's possible, but that's okay because this part doesn't have to come back off. I'm not sure. I guess this is a rubber sack that's in here. Mike went ahead and replaced the sack. The original one from 2001 when the pen was made had lost elasticity so while we were there in the shop he replaced it and I just had to let the the glue or the shellac whatever he used to secure it I just had to let it cure for a few hours before I inked it back up there's a pressure bar here and this is a very simple pressure bar assembly I'll show after I do the writing sample I'll go ahead and take the rest of the pen apart but it does squeak a little. I guess if I were able to reassemble it completely, I could put just a tiny bit of silicone grease in there. But once you tighten it down, that's not an issue. That's only an issue you have to deal with when you're inking the pen up. There are two bands here. Now, this one feels pretty nice but the cap band they did note on the website at Van Ness that there is some pitting here you can't really notice it or at least I can't with the naked eye I can feel it a little bit and I took my loop with me to the store since they had mentioned it okay there in the center you might be able to see that there's a little spot it's got a slight greenish tint to it kind of like a patina there's a little bit more now, I'll tell you what I did. When I got home, I took a little bit of silicone grease, the thick kind, on a Q-tip. I wiped it along just the cat band and then took a tissue and kind of polished it in there and 
I just wanted to have a little protective layer to maybe keep those areas from absorbing more moisture from my hands and getting worse. I don't know if that will help. I don't know if that may cause more damage longer term, but I thought it was worth a shot. That is really the only sign of wear other than the sack that had to be replaced. That's really the only sign of wear on the pen. There was no scratching or anything. This was, I believe, this would have been considered new old stock. It was a pen from 2001. It's not a used pen. I'm the first owner of it, so it's like a brand new pen. It's not ex a completely flat top pen. It comes to kind of cone shaped but it feel when you feel it it feels more like a, a dome it's a very smooth cone and the seam here where the band that attaches the clip is nice and smooth the craftsmanship is very good on this pen i like the taper here after the cap band it's nice and smooth and just looks really nice. I like the proportions of it. One thing I'm not as fond of, the band on the sleeve just comes to an abrupt halt right there. But it's nice and it's fairly smooth. The band is level with the resin underneath it. And then on the other end... This seam is nice and smooth. The clip is a folded metal clip and it's fairly tight. If I try to slide just a, a thin sheet of rhodia under it, it's going to wrinkle up the paper. It's on there pretty tight. But if I use the cardboard sleeve here, I'm able to slide it on and off. So depending on the, like if you're going to slide this into a pen case, depending on how thick the material is you want to slide it on, you may or may not have difficulty. Now, this is fairly smooth underneath there. Since it's folded metal, I was concerned that it might be rough and want to catch on it, but it's not scratching this at all. So if you have a material that you want to slide under there, um, I wouldn't be worried about it catching on it. Once I decided that I wanted to take a look at this pen when we went to Van Ness, I started doing some research online about the Bexley nibs and the stub nib in particular there was there were a few mentions of it having some pretty severe baby's bottom when I went to Van Ness I took my loop and I checked it and I could tell by looking at it that it did have a little bit of baby's bottom and when I did my first writing sample after I inked it up you can see that in several places it's skipping and has railroading it's almost like every other word there's a little bit of railroading almost it looks like I wasn't putting any pressure on the nib you can see it writes really wet until it just skips so I'm able to write with a fairly light hand, but lots of skipping pretty regularly throughout the writing. Look at that. And so I watched SBRE Brown's video on how to correct baby's bottom, and you can see my writing samples I was doing as I was going through the process. You have to be really patient. It's, it took a while. Quite a bit of work on this nib to get that corrected, but I've been using this pen quite a bit. Now, I do ha have some continued problems with very minor hard starting, and that is due to the ink I'm using, Tokiwamatsu. The nib feels 
wonderful on the paper. It's not glassy smooth. The reverse writing is glassy smooth, but the regular writing is like a satin, between a satiny and a chalky smoothness. I'm going to do a writing sample now and just let you see what it looks like. That just, it feels perfect. I'm enjoying this pen just as much as ever. I have the 18K stub. And I debated, after I saw that the stub nib had the issue with baby's bottom, I asked to see a medium nib, but the medium nib had just a regular plastic feed and I've never owned a pen with an ebonite feed. Here's a closer look of the 18 karat nib. There's a little S for stub. And there's the ebonite feed. But the ink flow that it delivers to this nib is just perfect. It's very consistent. I don't have any issues with it going from really wet to drying up a little bit. It's just, I love it. It's a number five size nib and I have a small hand. This section reminds me of like the smaller pilot size sections and they just fit my hands perfectly like the Metropolitan or the um, the 78G. Just very nice. Here's the nib and section compared to a Pilot Metropolitan and a Pilot Prera and a Caveco AL Sport. This is a small section and there are threads right here but the threads are very smooth. The threads feel like a very good quality. Now that being said, there is just the tiniest bit of play in the threads. In fact, the cap doesn't feel quite as loose. Yeah, back here feels a little more loose. The sleeve feels a little more loose than the cap, but I do, I do have to be kind of careful because I've caught it wanting to cross thread a few times. So I'm always very deliberate and pay close attention when I'm putting the cap back on. I don't want to cross thread it, but the threads do feel much smoother. The cap threads feel much smoother, not as squeaky. Now the reverse writing, I didn't do any work on it and it is just butter on glass smooth and I like it because it writes a little drier compared to the regular writing so on papers that are a little less fountain pen friendly I've been able to write using reverse writing in fact I've written in my journal like two A5 pages with the reverse writing and I'm able to write with such a light touch I'm not worried about doing any kind of damage to the nib since I'm basically writing the wrong direction. And it's very pleasant. It writes drier than the regular writing, but not so dry that it looks bad, especially with this ink. This is a nice dark ink and you get some nice shading there. I guess I can go ahead and now show how you access the sleeve. In most sleeve fillers, it's an issue to take it apart, but this just comes apart like a cartridge converter. And this holds a decent amount of ink. The second time I inked it up, I actually measured it, and it holds around one and a half milliliters. On my first fill, I was able to write 13 A5 pages. This time, well, let me go ahead and mention before I close this up, Mike just attached this filler bar 
with a little bit of rubber cement. Now, when I filled it this time, I put the pen in the ink, submerged the nib in the ink, and filled it until I quit hearing bubbles. And then I turned it right side up and just pressed the bar gently, pressed it off and on gently. It bubbled a little bit until I got all the ink that was in the feed pulled back down into the sack. And then I pressed it until all the air was pressed out of the sack, submerged it back in the ink, and I feel like I got a complete fill. That's similar to the method of filling that people use whenever they're trying to fill a vacuum filler completely. Now, this ink is prone to kind of drying pretty quickly on the nib. Since I've had the nib exposed to air this much, let's see how difficult it is to get it writing again. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure. Okay, there we go. And that's worst case scenario. I, did, I just applied a little bit of pressure. This Tokiwa Matsu is prone to drying and causing a little film on the nib. And you can see there was a tiny little hard start there, just that, pausing for that amount of time. But it's, it's such a, a nice, nice looking ink. Now, this pen, so many things about this pen are the opposite of what I typically like in a fountain pen. It's, it's unusual looking. I remember the first time I saw this pen, I think Carrie from Pens and Tea had gotten one, and I thought, oh, with this sleeve in the back, I just was not crazy about the way it looked. And so I was never tempted by this sleeve filler. But when Conklin started selling their sleeve filler and Mark Twain had used a sleeve filler, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a fan of Mark Twain, but just the idea of this being a vintagey type filling system, I, it intrigued me. But I shopped for a while on eBay for a Parker Duofo Jr. That was a pen that was recommended to me by ODE and for a, a nice vintage pen that you can get it at a decent price. And I watched some videos from Grand Mia Pens on how to replace the sack. And I thought that's something I could possibly do. And I bid on a few I didn't win those auctions. I was a little hesitant to plunk down too much money on one and then not be able to get it riding. Another thing that concerned me about sleeve fillers is most of them are difficult to get into. Not impossible, but it's not something that you can just open it up and check and see if there's anything wrong. You have to go through a process to get it apart. And that's what I like about this. It's put together like a cartridge converter. If you suspect something, there might be a leak somewhere, you can easily get it apart and check it. And so I saw a video from Mike at Van Ness demonstrating how easy it is to get this one apart. And that got me thinking about this. I liked that you had the option to get an 18 karat nib. This is my first 18 karat nib. That was interesting to me. The ebonite feed kind of interested me. So even though this was a, a type of pen that's not typically my style, the stub nib, you know, that's not typically my style of pen, but this one writes so nice. In fact, I had mentioned that this, I thought this was like a 1.1, and it might be a 1.1 mill, millimeter nib. If you compare it to my 1.5 writing sample. Here's a writing sample of the stub nib compared to my sister's Twisby Prussian Blue 
with the snub nib and also her Twisby, I think it's just the clear 580, it has the plastic section on it. It's not an aluminum section. So the Twisby stub nibs, I think they're a 1.1 stub nib and this appears to be nearly identical in line width. But I've been using this for everything, for little notes to myself, a little bit of journaling, not not too much journaling. I've used it for letter writing. It writes beautifully on the paper that I use for letter writing. I'm very fond of it. Now, I also watched a video from Alan Light. He's got the black model. And one of the things that Alan mentioned was that you could post this. In fact, it looks like it is designed to be posted. And he's a diehard poster, and I used to be. But even Alan mentioned that this, it does, it posts very securely, very nicely, but it just looks ridiculous. So it doesn't, it's, it is back weighted, but not uncomfortably so, but it just doesn't look that great. I wish this pen could have been designed without this cat band on the sleeve. I realize there's a necessity for it just to ensure that there's no cracking. Maybe a smaller band would have looked nicer, but this is a pen that I shouldn't like, but I really do. One of the things I don't like about it is that you can't see how much ink you have, but it does hold a lot of ink and it's very easy to top it off if you're going to be going somewhere. I don't see this pen as a pen that I'll be taking out and about. It does feel kind of dainty, and you can hear a little bit of rattling there, and when I first started using this, I thought it was this little sleeve rattling, but when you tighten it down, it doesn't rattle. It's just that pressure bar in there bumping against the side. Yeah, that squeak. I might do something to try to, I don't know, You. I don't have access to the threads unless I'm able to get this top part off. This little top cap, if you take it off, this will thread off the front of the pen. I might try to get it off and try to grease those threads, but Yeah, you can hear that pressure bar bumping against the side. I don't notice it when I'm writing. I have to actually bump it to get it to do that. And when I'm keeping it on my desk, I, I just write at my desk with this. When I set it on my desk, I use the little Levenger sleeve that was sent to me when I bought my Pilot Custom Heritage 91. I bought it used from a seller and he sent this nice little pen sleeve. I was using it with my Custom Heritage, but I found it fit in there perfectly. But when I would pick this up, it would just slide out. And in fact, I it shot out one time when I was in a class. Thank goodness there was some carpeting on the floor that cushioned the fall, but with this sleeve filler, there's something in there that it gets stuck, and I, if I just give it a squeeze, well, yeah, if I give it a squeeze here on the side, then it comes the rest of the way out, so I don't have to worry about it accidentally shooting out. It feels like there's just a, there's a little tag in there that catches on this little lip, and it makes yeah, it holds it in there securely. So I just pinch the sides. I say that, pinch the sides and it comes right out. So it makes me feel a little more secure and I can set it on my desk. I don't have to worry about getting little scratches on the bottom of the pen. Okay, I've been talking about this pen forever. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.